Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to this Blender physics slash animation tutorial. And this time we are going to do an exercise with Clove Simulation and see how we can end up with this. Which as you can see, it has a camera smooth movement. We also have two light sources. And if you look closely, we have some depth of field and motion blur. So let's see how we can make this. So as a good habit, I like to change the Blender units to meters or miles. And let's also go to File and use a preference, go to System and on here select CUDA and press Save User Settings. That's the first thing they'll always do. Up here we select Cycles Render and in the Render tab separate to select GPU and now we are good to go. Let's get started with creating a plane by pressing the Shift A menu which is going to be our backdrop and we can scale it up with S 10 times we can enter in edit mode with tab and with E extrude this edge in Z. Something like this. Now we can make it longer in the Y axis. And we can go to the modifiers tab. And add the subsurface modifier with the view set to 4. Ok, now we can add with Ctrl R horizontal cuts like this. And give a few more adjustments just to make sure it doesn't appear in the camera. Ok, and that's it for our backdrop. Now let's move on to this cube, which is going to be our table. And it's going to be very simple. So let's just scale it in the Y axis like this, in object mode. And now we enter in edit mode with tab. And with Ctrl R, cut in half. Delete this side. And cut again in half and delete the other side, like this. And in the modifier tab, let's add a mirror. And we can cut horizontally with Ctrl R and move it up like this. And now with G, we move down in the Z axis a value like 0.2. And we want to repeat this for the leg of the table. So it can be equal in both sides. In the mirror modifier, let's also turn on Y axis. And now we can delete these faces like this. Now with Ctrl Tab, choose Vertex and we can select this vertex. And with Ctrl Shift Tab, let's change the snap to vertex. And if you move up in the Z axis, while you hold Ctrl, you can snap it like this to the other vertex. And we can select four vertices and close all of these faces. And after you have done it, let's move the top of the table down a little bit. And with the table selected, press Ctrl S to select, cursor to select it, and create a plane from Shift A menu. And this is going to be our towel or clothes. Now rotate it in the Y axis. 45 degrees and scale it up a bit in the Y axis and in the X axis. Now you can press S and do times on X to scale only on the local axis of the plane. Move it a little bit up. Let's go to the last separator where the physics are. And with the plane selected, let's apply close. And down here we have some presets. And we want to choose cotton. Set the steps quality to 10. Now we want to add a collision to the table and to the ground. So let's select our plane again and check cloth collisions. And we want to change the friction to around 50. Otherwise the towel would slide too much and fall on the ground. And now if we press Alt A to play, we can see that nothing really special happened, nothing is happening, just a plane falling. And that's because we need to enter in edit mode, select everything with A and press double V so we can choose subdivide. And we can subdivide around 3 to 4 times. And then go to the modifiers and add a solidify, which is going to give a little bit of thickness to the plane and a subdivision surface with the subdivision set to 2 in view. 
Now if you press Alt A to play, you can see it's working great. Looks almost good. But uh, you see these squares right here? To solve that, we need to press on smooth. And now that's it. Now it looks really smooth and really great. Now we want to make sure that the towel is big enough and that when it falls, it stays in the center of our table. Let's just add a very quick material. So let's go down here to select Node Editor. And in the Material tab, we can rename this to Tower Material. And we can find great textures in this site called CG Textures. And you can find this texture that I use it in the Fabric section. It's pretty cool, this site, actually. And after you have downloaded your texture, you only need to press Shift A to add an image texture. We are also going to need a mapping and an input, which is the texture coordinate. We can connect the UV to the mapping and the mapping to the image texture and add the image texture to the fuse shader, like this. And you can open and select your image and it will probably appear like this, which means we need to select our cloth, our plane, Enter in edit mode and press A to select everything and with U you can choose unwrap and as soon as you do it your text will appear. But maybe it's too big or too small which means you have to make sure these values of the scale in the mapping will go higher or lower depending on how your texture looks. And now after having a good movement of the cloud we want to adjust the camera so we can catch what is going on and we are going to animate the camera just with a smooth movement, a very simple thing. And now please be careful, I actually end up using only shortcuts when I did this and when I was editing I realized that it may be kinda hard for some people to follow along. Now I'm gonna press Ctrl up arrow so this window gets full screened I'm gonna find a place for the camera to stop and I think here it's a good place for the end of our animation. And now I press Ctrl Alt Num Pad 0 and the camera comes to this position of the viewport. Let's just press G and two times on Z so we can move the camera a little bit back like this. We also want to use the shortcut Shift Right Arrow so we can go to the end of our animation and now, with our camera selected, we want to insert a keyframe by pressing I and we can choose location and rotation. I inserted keyframe separately, don't know why I did this, but you can always insert location and rotation at the same time. And I immediately pressed shift left arrow to go to the beginning of the animation, which is the frame 0. Let's get out of our camera view and now we want to find a good position for the camera to start. And when you find it, you can press Ctrl Alt Numpad 0 for the camera to assume your viewport position. And press I to insert keyframes on the location and rotation. Let's go ahead and press Ctrl Up Arrow again so we can go back to our normal viewport. And in the dope sheet, we probably want to grab the end frames and push them to around 140 frames, like this. And now, if we press Shift A, you can see it looks much better. It has this smooth camera movement. By the way, select the ground and apply smooth on the left panel, so it looks better when rendering. Also make sure that the table is touching the ground. And to do that, you can select it in object mode. And if you press G and then Z to lock in the Z axis, you can hold control and by passing with your mouse in, in this vertice, it will automatically snap, as you can see. That's a quick tip for snapping objects wherever you want. Now we are almost done and we just need to change a few things in the light. So let's select it and in this lamp icon press use note. This gives us the option to control the intensity or strength, which we can set to 1000 and we can also change the color until we get to something like this, 
which is a warm color and very appealing. Let's just duplicate this light to around here and we want to change the strand to a third of the main light, which is 333 and also set it to this bluish color, if you want. We also want to push the light behind our camera or almost behind our camera. After that we can set up our depth of field and for that we need an object and it could be the table but I'm gonna show you a nice trick. So let's just select the table and press Shift S to choose cursor to select it. And now we want with Shift A to create an empty with plain axis like this. And place somewhere around here and this is going to be our camera target or camera focus. And if you select the camera and click on this camera icon at the bottom we can find the depth of field and this is where we want to select our object to be created, our empty. And now if you use lower values on the size of the depth of field, the image will be more neat. But if you use higher values, this will leave the image more blurry. And mine is set to 0 0.05. And this is only to give a new level of realism to your animation. I also change the focal length to have a wider amplitude and 30 is good. Now before moving to the motion blur, let's just go to the render tab and leave everything ready to render. And most of you know this stuff, but we want this to be 100. And this is where you select the frame rate. The animation you saw in the beginning was 60 frames. And here you can select where you're going to save it and the format as well. And the amount of samples. And now for the motion blur, we can check this and we want to choose this curvature. You can try the others if you want. And the shutter is around 1.20. And to see our motion blur in action, we have to take a render with F12. In the preview mode we can't see it. And we can see that when there is an object moving fast, it gets blurred. And if you set this value to 2, you can see that it gets much more blurry. So higher values will get your moving objects with more blur. But uh, that's mainly it guys, you can now press the animation button and you have done a close simulation and saw a few tricks on animation. I hope you enjoyed it, thanks for watching guys, please subscribe for weekly Blender and game development tutorials, also press the notification button to be notified when I upload a new video, and see you in the next tutorials.